six of what you're listening to. Thank you for tuning in. Got a great panel today. Classic panel guest today. Classic. Andy, and a classic panel now. Yeah. Andy. Yeah. Bethel, Andy. Uh, Hi, Rob Bill. Henry. Hi, Mike. And Hi, Bill. veteran Bill Chamberlain. Bill. 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 <laughs> Old school. So man. Everyone who's been watching knows the format. We've all picked out five records we've been listening to over the week. We're going to talk about them, have a good time with them. Um, as usual, I didn't specify a genre or even a format, actually, but usually it's pretty much records, except me who held up a, a Led Zeppelin CD box set last week. But, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> people, people enjoyed that, so I think it's okay. Well, so what we'll that. do, we'll go around, we'll do, we'll do one each until we've <clears throat> done our five. Okay. And the way I'm looking at it today, it'll be easier for me if I go first, then Andy, then Bill, then Rob, and then we'll go around five that's times. Clockwise, well, for that's clockwise. That's that's the simplest way. Simplest way. <laughs> clockwise. Clockwise. Thanks, Andy. That's that's. You're welcome. <laughs> clockwise is how we're going to um, do this. Yeah. <laughs> With whatever All brain right. cells I got left. <laughs> Thanks, for, long Thanks for that. Thanks for that. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to kick things off with my first pick of the day. Mm. I'm going to listen to this band. It's a Japanese band from the '80s. This record came out in 1989. It's never been released on vinyl in Japan. And it got reissued recently on a Belgian label uh, called, Jesus Christ, what's the name of the label? The Belgian label called Aguia Records. There you go. This is the record I'm talking about. The band is called After Dinner. The album's called Replica of Paradise. Came out in 1989. In Switzerland, it came out on a Swiss label. Wow. Yeah, called Rec, huh. Rec Records. So I think might put out, I don't know what they put out, a bunch of whole different stuff. But, and it came out in Japan on a, a label called Zero Records, who did like some Shonen Knife and stuff, but oh, never yeah. came out on vinyl in Japan. Still hasn't come out on vinyl in Japan. But <clears> this <throat> is kind of like avant garde, baroque, like art pop record. Chamber Swim. pop, whatever you want to call it. There's lots of kind of small sound in it, beautifully recorded. And kind of the main member of this band is a woman called Hako. This is her on the cover and on the back, too, actually. And okay. she wrote all the songs, sings all the songs, wrote all the music. And she's got all these different musicians that play with her. And there's harps, not harps, called this oboes, violins, uh, like little key, uh, tape loops. It's really kind of avant garde pop. But pretty catchy. Like the first yes. record is more catchy. Andy, you know. I was going to say. So how'd you find this? How'd you come well, across this? I kind of already knew about the band. I have their first album. Okay. Which is called Glass Tube, which came out in 1984. Uh, okay, I'll tell the story. So the woman, this is Hako, the singer, and I got to know her as a <clears> friend because she lives near me. And when I was doing the like monthly <clears> music <throat> events in Osaka, she played like three times, like her solo stuff. So I kind of got to so know you've, her. You've seen her, okay. I met her. She's kind of she's a friend of mine yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but they were kind of around in the 80s. This band was an 80s band. Uh, I mean, you could throw like Kate Bush, that's a bit of a too simplistic uh okay. comparison, but there is a little bit of that dreaming era Kate Bush in there. Enya? Oh no, 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 no. This is way, way, I'm, way I more left field. <laughs> way more left field than that. It's very uh yeah. Yeah. Avant-garde pop music, but okay. yeah, like, yeah. for every, all the punks watching, there's some interesting punk-related information about this record. So this was remastered at Omega Sound. Omega Sound is a studio in Osaka, and that's where Warhead and Nightmare mm. and Corrupted and Sob all like recorded their early records at Omega Sound, and this is where this was uh, interesting. remastered. So if you like avant-garde pop, Kate Bush, chamber pop, that's and, where the Oh, yes. There's a thing that she does. She, uh, as I said, it's like very small sounds. Everything's like very close up to the microphone. Mm -hmm. There's a bit where the, she she bounces a volleyball on the floor of a gymnasium, and that is like the rhythm of the song. And oh, it really wow. comes through. It's pretty it's interesting. It's almost like a like using foley or something. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So, and she was yeah, a lot of her tape movie. looping and stuff. So. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's my first choice after dinner. That's it, huh? Paradise of Replica. Japan, 1999, reissued cool. from 
this year. So, there you go. Check out. There you go. Andy. Oh my god. Clockwise. <laughs> clockwise. All right. So <laughs> I I I hate to admit, but I don't listen to Avant Garde. You know what? I mean, I maybe, 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 maybe I have, but I just don't know it. No, it's yeah. not like I'm searching for it. Yeah. Um, I've discovered this band a handful of years ago, and I think they've only been around for a little while. Mm. And they're from London. Um, mm. and I don't normally, I don't normally latch on to a band. You usually you kind of listen to something, you're like, that's fucking cool. And then you just kind of move on. But these guys, these guys I discovered, and they had this EP. They have new material out there. This is an older EP. I think this was released two years ago, 2020, I believe. Final dose. So hmm. with age, I feel like. <laughs> I feel like my 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 tastes have have become a little more kind of technical. Mm. Even like my writing, my music writing, I felt has been a little technical. And these guys are just kind of primal sounding dark punk. Oh, cool! And it's not. There's nothing really like it's not generic. That's not what I'm saying. It's just it, it and it doesn't have like. I went out of my way to have like a really shitty analog sound. I don't mean that by primal by primal. I mean by like the general energy of it is super fucking killer. So I would kind of call this kind of like a dark hardcore punk. Mm. Um, and I can't really think of any bands to kind of compare it to because I think that's why I latched onto it because it doesn't sound like anything that I can really kind of think of, you know, but um I've been playing these guys for actually weeks, actually probably longer. Um, and it's really interesting because I do a radio show here and I'll play these guys kind of on a regular basis on my show, but I haven't got their vinyl because you can only find it overseas. And it's, you know, obviously it's kind of expensive. So I've been downloaded their digital files that I normally listen to, but I decided to buy the, this record and they have a new one that just came out too, I believe called world prisoner or something. But um, this showed up today, so I was super stoked because I'm like, this is what I've been fucking listening to, and you know, with digital files, you can't really show them on what we're doing. So <laughs> it was good timing. Anyway, check these guys out. This is called Dark Places. This EP, four songs, uh, brilliant stuff. Andy, yeah. who put that out? Can you tell us who released that? I do not. I think it was self released. Self released. Okay. Or wait, maybe, maybe I don't know. I can't. Um, I'd have to check on that. All right. Let me get online and check on that. All right. All right. Nice. That's a new one. New one for me, for sure. All right, Bill, what's your first pick of the day, mate? Okay. So this record is getting a lot of hype right now. A oh. lot of hype. Oh. <laughs> and I was I was like, okay. You, you know how you guys know how it is. When a record has a lot of hype. I mean, at least with me, I can be a little skeptical. <laughs> going, okay, it can't be all everybody saying it's cracked up to me, but uh, the mess, the chisels. Holy <laughs> crap. Really? This I is great. Is that the it's mess from Brazil? Great. I don't think they're, I don't know if they're from Brazil. Uh, but it's a split, right? Split. Yeah. Is like Dude, that's, chisel they they did that brain. LP, man, and it was fucking killer. It was like kind of Blitz worship, if that's the same band. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah man. Yeah. Nice. And it's fucking uh, super good. Uh, this is just so good. I've listened to it a bunch of times. And uh, I listened to it so many times that I forgot where I put it. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to scramble to find it before. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, where did it? So, uh, but yeah, I, got, I mean, I have all their other records too. And oh, people in the comments yeah. uh, again, Clifford is saying that Mesa from Mexico. There you go, Mexico. <laughs> that's what it was. Mexico. Cheers, guys. Yeah. Cheers, they're, guys. They're pretty awesome. And uh, but Dude, that LP kicks ass, man. It's like super blitz worship, but it's like done really yeah. well. Oh, it's nice. really nostalgic sounding, actually. I have yeah. two chisel 45s yeah, that are amazing, so I, I definitely have to pick yeah. those up. 
Yeah. How do you yeah, this is it's great. It's really good. I think it just got reissued to already. So Oh, really cool. Who yeah. who put it out, Bill? Uh Beach Impediment Records. Oh, wow. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Cool. Oh man, yeah, and I suggest everybody go out and buy this when they can because this is really good. That um, did make it to the punk store here, but it went. Like yeah, that. yeah, it's it's so good, it's so good. I mean, it's like you're in 1982. Nice listening yeah. to an uh, an oi punk band, kind of like little bit like the partisans with that really ripping guitar and yeah nice. and like really good like melody to it yeah like cox fire type yeah stuff. yeah, nice. yeah. kind of catchy really it's fucking great yeah nice Beautiful. yeah i didn't ever heard mess i'm interested in here <laughs> check them out dude they're super good oh, cool. Cool, cool, cool. yep all right yeah. thanks bill rob what are you going for us all right so um, this record, weird story I'll tell really quick. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, I used to, I had a television in my room and I was able to pick up um, uh, TV stations on cable from New York uh, on WOR. And I would stay up to watch Rock Point. So, channel 9. Yeah, Channel 9. So at nighttime, they would play primitive video shows pre MTV. And they would play this rock of, just all this British stuff. And it was stuff that was on stiff records. And mm -hmm. um, this band I, I become obsessed with when I was a kid because I never heard, I can't remember anything. And I found this finally for like $2. Um, the name of the band is Dirty Looks. Oh, yep. So, um, New York band, um, Staten Island, you know, that area. Um, picture punky power pop with that downtown New York sound uh, mud club peppermint lounge vibe. Hmm. It doesn't go for a huge amount of money either, no. does it? No, no. This is like a $2 record, literally. Yeah. This is, it's a gold stamp promo and it's white label and it's loud as fuck. Um, yeah. Plus the weirdest thing too, I don't know if this is just because it's a, a promo, but I always find this shit interesting. I can find the damn, you know, it comes with your standard inner, mm -hmm. but then these like to come with little, um, little guides to the, yeah. the films. Which I <laughs> yeah. Thought was but yeah, it's a dirt cheap record. And picture the fast, tough darts, um, that kind of style. Um, I, I feel like. I feel like this this is one of the last really good genres where there are records available cheap. It's like good oh, yeah. punky power pop type stuff. I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. I found this record yeah. store in um, West Virginia, Kaiser, West Virginia, and I found like the band The A's. Oh yeah. Band. So From fucking Philly. good. Really? Yeah, they're yeah. amazing. It's so good. Um yep. Yeah, this is kind of in that vein too. So this is like if you ever find this, buy it. Seriously, yeah. it, it, you'll, you'll be fine. It's only two or three bucks, um, and it's like uh, one of my other favorite things. And on um, this is that this guy's name is Marco Sin. Right? <laughs> I love him. He has the skinny yeah. tie. The power. I was gonna face. say the skinny ties. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it looks like like John Belushi's friend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This is, and, and this guy's like, oh, I'm in, uh, you know, I'm in the Stray Cats. What's up? <laughs> like, I work in it's great. That's why I love this because they look like morons, and it's like they just rip. <laughs> it's really like, definitely check it out. It's a good cheap record. Are we talking like 2020? The shoes, that kind of thing, or is it like no, more? not as good as nothing like on the level of the shoes? 2020 but, maybe, but like picture more of um, like New York City, like punk. <laughs> in terms of like melodic stuff like dictators wow. or tough darts oh wow okay the fast wow. stuff like that so there it's it's um you know let's say they also because they're on an english label they're on stiff on mm -hmm. for some yeah. reason they're on they, stiff yeah. and epic at the same time mm -hmm. in america so they they also have that prerequisite um you know elvis costello vibe 
you know, first three albums vibe. Right, right. Of, this came out 80. So it's like, you know, they have that kind of like mm -hmm. uh, green shirt kind of vibe to some of his songs <clears throat> and, you know, um, you know, stuff from the first two albums. But uh, yeah, cheap record, man. Seriously, I was like, whoa, I finally found this. This is great. Yeah. Wow, that's the first one for me. I've never even heard of that before. Wow. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what, how much I'll put. I'm going to say very little, maybe two things, three. Yeah. Something like that. Wow. But yeah, check it out. Nice. And the right. great thing, great thing about Power Pop too is that every city had a couple bands like that. Yeah. Yep. And you just got to find out who they were. Mm -hmm. I found a few in Pittsburgh that I didn't know existed, and um, yeah, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I was I was surprised in Philly. There's yeah. some killer ones: the A's, yeah. uh, the Reds. Yeah, that's a great record. I have that one. The Reds records. So yep. good. Another yeah. one that's like a ten buck record, eight buck record. That shows like up that. all the time here, used even now. That's an absolutely killer record, and I feel like that was like the template for bands like the Marked Men and stuff like that. Oh yeah, they lifted totally. a little bit from the Reds. Yeah. Yeah, that whole shit sandwich record label kind of vibe and the whole like goner. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, yeah, I, I didn't even think about that, but it makes sense. Yeah. But yeah, the yeah, power pop stuff is super because no one really wants it now, that punky power pop stuff. And, you know, and that, even now I'm pulling out like shoes records for like five bucks, three bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we always buy shoes records. We always just pick them up because they're so cheap, and I just yeah. give them to people. Yeah, me too. I used to do that with yeah. uh, Go Go's uh, Vacation because it was a flop. Yeah. So I would buy like, like, and they were like a dollar each. So I just buy a bunch of them and be like, right. keep one, give it to my friends. Yep. I used nice. to love doing that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Continuing, hey. continuing in the mm. clockwise right, Mike. tradition. It's my turn again. <laughs> My my second record is weirdly enough is also from 1989, and this has been a kind of favorite of mine since it came out. Really, they had an EP before this, but the, it's a Boston band, not a hardcore punk band, but kind of punk adjacent. They were on Tang on Tang Records. Okay, okay. can anyone guess what I'm talking about? Sorry. Oh, Bo one of my Bo favorite Bo bands. Yeah. Really, I was expecting <laughs> to be like. <laughs> Booed off the stage. I, I <laughs> saw I mean, them two I... days in a row playing in 1989, and it was one of the great with the Lemonheads, and it was one of the best shows. Really? That's a bullet. That's a bullet. Wait, 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 wait. Really? That's like part of my story because I saw them in England, also in either 88 or 89, also with the Lemonheads. Oh, that's amazing. Wow. But they were that's supporting awesome. the Lemonheads. Probably They're from in your Boston, case, Bill. From Boston yeah. band, but this is like. So it's kind of got that eight there's a bit of acdc in there mm -hmm. there's a bit yeah. of like punk rock swagger but they're really really good musicians it's really nicely produced they got snapped up by a major label up like pretty quickly yeah after What's that yep. 89 is that pre-grunge that's kind of grunge era it's a like proto the first wave of grunge exactly like exactly i was listening to it the other night it's like oh there's definitely a bit of that like proto grunge going on yep. in this record that Didn't Bola. somebody from Gangrene go on to be in Bola Volta? Uh, but like, I think they did. So, okay. Oh, Bola. oh Bola. no. Bola. One of the guys in Bola Volta, the first original guitar player, was Corey Moog Brennan. And he it was went, in the Lemonheads too, right? Yeah, he went into the Lemonheads. Yeah. I know he that. Played, when, when I saw them, he played in both both bands on the same night. Right. That's amazing. <clears throat> That's the same one I saw. It was so great. Oh, Brian from Drop Dead is with us. He he says uh, he's in the comments. Thanks. He says, "I saw, <laughs> I saw Bullet Levolta with Prong. They were both bad." He said, <laughs> "With Prong, it's so good." But, okay, but he good. redeems himself. He redeems himself by saying, "This is a good record." So they. Okay. Uh, I mean, you know what? There's a thing about this. Yeah. There's two guitarists in this record. I yes. didn't on on this record and. Uh, I didn't Google, I didn't check the name of one of the guitar, but the one of the guitarists is Kenny Chambers. Right. And he's in Moving Target. Yes. And he's so that's what it was. Yes. I got Kenny him really Chambers high. was is Moving Targets is kind of his main band. And that Burning Water record is literally one of my favorite records of all time. So and every good. now and again on this record, you hear that kind of chiming <laughs> guitar Tony has. Like coming through on this record, the other guitarist okay. is like more metal, not metal but rock. 
and then you well, get these yeah. you get these like Kenny Chambers like Huskadoo-ish kind of yep. chiming and guitars Clay, coming. And Clay so Carver's good. the other guy. Um, okay, Clay, Clay's sense. the yeah. other guitar player on that record. His brother yeah. went on to do a documentary about Guided by Voices of all things. Wow. And then became yeah, a I was playing this the other night. It still sounds as good to, today so as good, it did yeah. for me. So good. So yeah, Bullet the Volta, the gift on ah. Here we go. This is actually the here we go. This is the kind of the major label reissue on B, BMG and RCA. So it has oh. like the EP tracks tacked on. Oh, to the look end. at that! I love that EP. Uh, Birth of Death, uh, Dead Wrong. Dead Tap Wrong. Door. It has those <clears> tracks <throat> tacked on. It's a ripper. That record's a fucking. It, it, ripper. Is, it is. A, it's. It is. It's like punk rock ACDC. Yeah. With with a very rock and roll. The singer is punk, super punk and roll. Punk mm. before it was invented, though. It's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before it was yeah. a thing. Yeah. His voice reminds me sometimes also of Keith uh, Keith Morris. He sort of has that snotty. Wine. You know what? I don't really research this. In his vocals, so it was. I yeah. found someone to say this is. They were like circle jerks meets ACD. So it's one of the, yeah, it's perfect. Fit. That's perfect. Well, yeah. Over enunciation. <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah, both. Yeah, they both do it. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. It's so pretty amazing. That's my, my. I'm glad that Rob, we have that connection. That's great. That's, that's I agree. I that made me so happy. I fucking love that record. That has a lot of memories for me. Yeah. I that was a huge record in '89 for me. So yeah. like yeah. seeing them and hanging out with those guys, super nice dudes, super nice and a great, just incredible record. So yeah, yeah, two thumbs Thank up. You. Just from this side of. The <laughs> <laughs> All right, Andy, your turn. Your turn next. Damn, this is going quick, man. Ah. Okay, so so I'm sitting here working, and I'm thinking to myself, there's a lot of Japanese hardcore. There's a lot of Japanese hardcore punk, especially now. It seems to be there's a lot of like resurgence going on. Okay. However, there's a lot of stuff, kind of semi-obscure stuff, but I've been kind of digging through my record collection and mm. I've had this record for a long time and I kind of rediscovered it. But this band, I believe they are from Osaka. <laughs> the Griffin. That's a live. Uh, oh no, that's not the live flexi. That's the, no. that's a no. great four track EP, right? That's a cool cover. This is probably, I think their best cause I've heard the other. It is. Yeah. And I've been playing this record probably the last couple weeks. It's been on constant rotation. Um, and this is some of like some, there's a lot of really good high energy fist pumping Japanese punk. But this for nice. me has killer melody to it. That's awesome. It's a dude. It's so good, man. I mean, you've got, you know, burning spirits and things like that, where it's got, you know, good kind of harmonizations and things of that nature. But, this this record itself for me every single track kicks ass and it's fucking all over the place because you have a track and i'm not going to pronounce it but you have you have a track that's like straight up hardcore punk and then boom it kind of breaks into this weird kind of circusy breakdown shit yeah, and you're like yeah oh, wow. this is awesome it actually kind of reminds me of a mushroom attack uh, uh, mushroom at attack track um the split they did with disorder but however it's really strong stuff. The only thing that really kind of throws me off is that they get going with killer energy on riffs and you start kind of pumping your fist and then they do an automatic change to something different. <laughs> but then that catches your attention and you're like, this fucking riff is good. So all the way through this EP yeah. absolutely shreds. And I believe this was wild, wild rest. That's record. alchemy, alchemy records. And then wild it? Okay, okay. But it, I'm pretty sure I can't say for sure, but you remember at the beginning of the show, I was mention, mentioning Omega sound. When the that the Omega Studios were well, after yeah. it was remastered, pretty sure that was recorded at that studio. Really? Okay. Yeah, pretty sure. Yeah. Oh what? Yeah, so this was a nice kind of rediscovery for me. That's that cool. that's that is the best record. You're right. Plus, there's a compilation called Fear, which has Fear. Dance the Macabre Fear and Rapes on it. Dance Macabre. Griffin, yep. And they're also really good. But that yeah. band is a funny band. They Brian. <laughs> Brian says they were big in Japan. They were big in Japan. They kind of got big because what they did, they did that. Then they suddenly were a Misfits style band. Then they did changed you say Misfits? Style. Misfits. Oh, okay. No, Misfits. Oh, yes. like horror punk. But they, but they changed like a misfit style, which they were kind of doing a little bit on that. But then they, they that ditched idea. that. They ditched that and they became like a kind of pogsy band. Huh. 
weird. And then they did that. They did that. They they did that and yeah. became like an OA street punk band and wore like West Ham mm. uh, yeah. football shirts. <laughs> <Yes. and stuff. laughs> really? Really? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. That's so weird. It's kind of like transition for that band. Yeah. Or songs yeah. about football, English football, and like. Wow. Yeah. That's the biting my tongue. They are an old sucker band. So there you go. That's yeah. interesting. No. Killer, killer record, man. Uh, it is. It is underrated and still you can find it for cheap. Absolutely, man. It's, it's one of those right. obscure finds. You're like, this fucking kicks ass. Yeah. So it's I the Griffin that. on uh, Wild West Alchemy yeah. Records. Yeah. Oh, okay. Nice. <laughs> All right, Bill. So, okay. My next record. Um, I never saw. I have never seen. Um, I looked it up on Discogs. As far as I could tell, it was only ever released on CD, mm. and it's from recordings in 1970. Uh -oh. It's a Japanese record. And it is wow, Kuni Kawachi and the Flower wow. Traveling Band. And it's from 1970, so it's pre Satori oh, Flower yeah, Traveling yeah. Band. Yeah. Um, maybe not quite as heavy, but more out there. Mm. Um, That's cool. It's really good. It's on cosmic rock records which i have something <laughs> else on cosmic rock as well that's a great, i love that that's a good time i believe that it is not like an official it is not an official yeah. <laughs> but i mean it's it's that's it's sick. really good it's like if you if you like you know heavy psych i mean this is what you want to hear is stuff yeah. like mm -hmm. this it, it's great awesome. you know? and uh we ordered this, I forget whether we ordered it from Australia or, but we had to, we had to order this and it cost a little bit to get it here. And uh, Australia, yeah, I bet. Yeah, it's, uh, and uh, the Kuni Kawachi, I guess, became known as a uh, writer of, children's music in japan do you know him mike i did not know that i did that. yeah uh, and uh, he started out like they the way they describe him on on discogs is like uh prog psych post-punk avant-garde experimental pop it's like keeps going on and on and uh <laughs> It's really good. It's really interesting, and it's it's something that after I'm done listening, it'll probably be a year before I listen to it again, and then I'll listen to it a bunch of times in a row again. Uh, that's always fun. I love that. It's it's really good. Yeah, I'm a really, bit jealous, really jealous of that one. I have to say. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, it's, I mean, it came out on CD officially in mm -hmm. Japan, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll settle for that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. For that. But yeah, it's cool. And the the CD has about twenty extra tracks on it. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> I can probably split. <laughs> well, it's it's. You can buy this, yeah. or you can buy this. Yeah. It's like so oh, record, I don't know. Yeah. Twenty the record. Extra, is, I don't know, man. It's a little much. The record is both of them, and the CD has an extra 20 tracks just by Kuni Kawachi. Oh, okay. And then there's like 16, 16, maybe not 16, but however many of both Flower Traveling Band and oh, Kuni okay. Kawachi. Okay. All right. Uh, cool. I'll yeah. this off. But on the CD, you get both. Record, you only get right. stuff with Flower Traveling Band. Oh, okay. okay. Got it, got it. Got it. Yeah. Nice. Sure. Just want to say cool. that Flower Traveling Band, Satori album is the best like heavy record from Japan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. So heavy. yeah. <clears throat> I'm due to listen to that, too. What's that yep. band? Well, I have to think. Is uh, Elvin and Two Children? Oh, that's a Blues Creation. 
Yeah, thank you. I couldn't remember the name of the band, but yeah, that record's great. That's a good one too. Yeah, that's a good one. yeah I enjoy nope, that one. That's cool. yeah. It's not the same at all. No. <laughs> it's not on the same level. More like or, straightforward or, blues rock, but it's still good now. No. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do it. All right, all right, Rob, what's your second choice? All right, all right. so I um, I was talking earlier about this, that uh, record store. I found this record store in this tiny place called Kaiser, West Virginia. It is a fly <laughs> spec. And for some reason, there's a record store there and it's called Solar Mountain Records. And it's like going into some crazy person's basement. It's like, you know, my yins or relatives, like boxes of stuff everywhere. There's no order. There is no fucking order. You just go crazy and grab records and see what's there. Wow. So he, it, God, but he put some things like into like, you know, sections. He had a punk box. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, you know, go to the punk box, and the first thing I like was there. Buy the whole box. <laughs> but then, no, no, no. A pl- it was not that good. <laughs> Most of it was punk with you know, quotation marks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, would oh, you love right. the cars? Yeah. yeah you know, I would have took that. It was more like the uh, pick Murphy's live. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> right. like, thank God this was the first thing sitting there, and I was so fucking stoked. It's like, I'll pay the thirty dollars because I need this record. This is the Flying Spiders and uh, Dutch Punk 77. It's yeah. fucking dude. Great. Okay. Yeah. I know what you're I talking about. Some dude that I actually met out there brought that up to me at some point, but really? I was half in the bag and I can't remember anything about it. <laughs> But I'm not like the flying spider. Yeah. Anyway, continue. It's great. Ah. It's I love early Dutch punk. Uh, it has yeah. that like Me Ramones, too. but like weirder and raw. You know what I mean? How it early? Has, like late, like mid late seventies. Yeah, this is seventy seven. Yeah. Yeah, this is seventy seven. This came out in seventy seven. Like wow. I guess they were one of the first of the whole Dutch. Um, you know, I gotta write that music. down, man. Uh, Ivy Green, these guys, helmets nitwits you know all that stuff i couldn't believe my luck like i only i used to have that dutch uh killed by epitaph compilation i've got that one i've got that i'm pretty yeah it's an incredible compilation and i'm pretty sure they are on it and that's how cover it's like damn that really it's so good yeah are they on one of those two compilations that has ivy green and yes all those bands on it yeah so good it's, yeah. I had it and I sold it like with everything I had to sell at that time. But so, like I said, I'm like just grabbing stuff to start my collection. And I could, I'm like, I'm in the middle of nowhere in the mountains. And yeah. there's a store that has Dutch punk. I'm like, okay. And then I start digging with, like other stuff. And I found like, wow, you know, things that wow. you don't normally see at record stores. Yeah. Just like, you know, rock stuff. But Oh, yeah, like um, psych and heavy stuff. I found a bang record, the first bang. Nice. Yeah, That's I found that. I found, um, oh, God, like a ton of shit, like um, American Revolution, uh, mm. Bo Grumpus. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, for like cheap fucking, not, you know, not yeah. cheap, but like way lower than it, it would you would pay for, like, you know, the average on Discogs. Mm-mm-mm. You know, it's about 10, 10 to 15 bucks yeah. because it's West Virginia. It's in the mountain. Those small towns, like wow. those little record stores are the best. I mean, you can Amazing. find like some of the best treasures there, man. I I lived so in a small cool. town in Colorado, man, and I used to raid some of those fucking thrift stores, man. I'd find like Peter and the Test Tube Babies for oh. 25 cents. Like <laughs> yeah. crazy shit. Yeah, yeah. it's mind blowing. And like yeah. the guy is the guy who owns the store is like a totally he's awesome. He's like this slightly crazed hippie-ish, but stoner, but weirdo he's more like like yeah. less grateful dead more residents yeah <laughs> he's been around the block yeah yeah he's awesome and he's he, <laughs> yeah. he's like he loves the fact that i come in and just buy a bunch of shit he's like oh dude and we, we bullshit about stuff and he just cuts me deals and you know but the, the thing is it's like how the fuck does this kind of shit happen how yeah. do you find a dutch first press dutch press of a you know legendary record for that and it's just like i'm in yeah, the middle man. of it it's great. I love. I think that's one of the the reasons I keep buying records and mm-hmm. going to record stores. And that's a good point. You know, you never know what the hell you're going to get, and it's like yeah. the experience means more than anything. You know, yeah. even if you don't get a thing, and it's just like, man, that store was cool. I'll go back. 
or mm-hmm. that store sucked. I'm pissed. I spent 20 bucks, you know, yep. like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of the, it's kind of like an experiment, but like, it's always a, a, a wonderful thing when it's like a happy accident like that. And um, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, and I told that guy, I'm like, I'll keep coming. You keep getting collections. I'll keep buying yeah. shit. From but yeah, if you, if um, you know, if anyone gets a chance to, you know, if you haven't heard it, but yeah, this is just you. If you love punk rock, '77 punk rock, you're gonna fucking love this. Yeah, man. Um, you actually just kind of jogged my memory on that, so I appreciate that. So oh, sure. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be diving That's into that for sure. Yeah. Nice. Oh, cool. Yeah. It's just fun. And there is a track that I love uh, called um, Stupid Magazines that sounds like it's awesome. It's so good. It sounds like X. Like, not the American X, but the Australian X. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's Better. it's a fucking rocker. It's oh, really cool, good. Man. Yeah, the whole record kills. And, yep. Um, nice. I, I listen every time. It's like one of my records I, I put on just to do anything. It's like, yeah, this record kills. Nice. So, yeah. Nice. All right. Thanks, Rob. <laughs> Oh, Bill, cast your minds back, um, your mind back to about a month ago when I was talking about that Singaporean uh, thrash metal band called Witch Seeker. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And we were talking about the record label Dying <laughs> Victims Productions from Germany, <laughs> who are a really cool label. And uh, That's a after that episode, show. I kind of was digging around a little bit for some other Dying Victims Productions records, and I found two. So this is going to be like a bit of a two for I'm cheating a little bit, but it's my show. I can do this. So. But there's these two records have something in common that I love. I think it's really cool. So we've got two bands, one from Germany, one from Sweden, all from like either this year or last year. First is a German heavy metal band. This is the thing. One band, like one name band name, but one word band name, one word album title. And both of these bands have that. Uh, it's funny. So it's like, this is, Say that again. This is tension. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, explain it. <laughs> uh, tension. <laughs> Let me tell you tension about tension. Is the name of the band. Decay is the name of the record. Tension is the name of the band. Decay is the name of the record. Look at tension. that. Gotcha. Oh, well, yeah, so they're like sure. a, a German metal band. Really, really mean potatoes. Like it's What like, year? Oh, last year. So oh, that like, was last year. Last year. <laughs> yeah, you, you thought it was like 1982, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, <clears throat> Open like... Gates, Moon Crusher, Mistress of Evil. Uh, nice. Moon Crusher? Moon Crusher. That's a great <laughs> title. <laughs> yeah, really. But, you know, I've kind of learned to read between the lines. If you kind of check, like, like met, the metal online press, you kind of learn to read between the lines. If you get things like, ooh, the singer isn't very good, that means the singer might be good. What I mean is it's going to be like, you know what I mean? It's like no like histrionics or like operatics. He's not exactly, exactly a great vocalist, like an old new British heavy metal vocalist, you know, meat and potatoes, oh, yeah. not, sure. trying, not trying too hard, you know, like is a little it, bit out of it. A, is it in a <laughs> uh, new British heavy metal vein? Like that? Yeah, like kind a, of. And some old yeah. like Swedish, but they're, they're German, but they're really doing that old like early 80s. He's, yeah, he's not that good like the way people used to say that Bruce Dickinson was better. Paul Diano wasn't that yeah, good. Kind of like that. I mean, this guy, this guy isn't this guy isn't even Paul Diano. That's just <laughs> oh, wow. I might need to buy this now. It's like, this guy's lazy. This this like I was like, this would be a great band if they got rid of the vocalist. I was like, no, 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 he's he's perfect. He's perfect for this band, you know. Yeah. So I don't know if you brought this up, but how, how did you find this? Well, okay, here we go. So like, I found this like this band called a uh, Witch Seeker, who are a band yes. from Singapore, oh, and it's okay. like just thrash metal kind of band. Right. And yeah, on no, this label, yeah. Dying, Victim, like Dying Victims Productions. So I like I delved a little bit, and they they released some kind of like D beat kind of stuff too, and some like more punky stuff. So mm-hmm. they're a pretty consistent label, very interesting label. So okay. yeah, I, I snapped cool, this man. tension. Decay, and then this is a little bit more aggressive, but I think you'll like this. Just looking at this, you're right. <laughs> this is uh, uh, just broken rules, man. <laughs> guys, <laughs> two for one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Insane is the name of the band. Okay, and Victims is the name of the album. Just some very. This is a Swedish band, very like mean potatoes, aggressive, like early eighties thrash metal. Oh, nice. Great stuff. With the great artwork as well. Yeah, it's total puss head worship. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just very, I'm very intrigued by this label and their aesthetics and like the bands they sign because it's very, very interesting to me. Yeah, that's cool. Thanks. 
just so yeah. Yeah, I think the art, man, that's cool. <clears throat> yeah, I was gonna say the art is sick as fuck. There you go. Mm -hmm. So I, I it kind of all links in together. I I had to show these two together because you know. You we go. appreciate it, Mike. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, I want to see these things. I'm like, I had no idea that existed. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of things. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have found this if I didn't I hadn't have found the other mm -hmm. record. And one thing kind of leads to another. Right. And down the rabbit hole. Down the rabbit hole. Yep. All right, Andy, what's your next pick? Man, <laughs> <laughs> you're struggling for the. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not struggling. It's just you know you have to like you know you got to get you got to get going here. So I live a block away from extreme noise records. I like literally live on the same block, which is super fucking dangerous. <laughs> oh yeah. I had this guy message me and Rob, you mentioned Netherlands Dutch yeah. music, right? So this dude, this dude messaged me and he's from Netherlands. He's like, I'm visiting here on business. He's like, I'm looking for this certain war plague record. I was like, okay. I'm like, I'll drop it off at the store for you. I'm a block from there, whatever. And then he's like, well, cool. Maybe we can meet for a beer or two. I was like, yeah, that unfortunately never happened. Anyway, I dropped the record off. He picked it up. We never crossed paths. He went back to his, his home in, in Netherlands. And then he messaged me. He's like, because I left it for him. I was like, just take it. Like, don't worry about buying it. Like, it's a gift, whatever. Like, if you came all this way and you're looking for a Warplug record, just fucking take it. He goes back home, messages me. He's like, let me send you some records. I was like, fuck, cool, man. He's yeah. like, I played in this band in the 80s yes. called, I played bass called Bob Wire. Wire. They're from Holland, right? They are. Oh, cool. No, and I don't know what that is. He sent me, he sent me a comp they were on, which damn it, I can't remember the name of it, but he sent me their two LPs, and both of them are, are self-released. This is the self-titled LP. Mm -hmm. Their second one was called Negative Punks. But the, he sent this to me, and I've never heard it before. And this was maybe, I don't know, five, six years ago or something like that. And, you know, you thought you've heard a lot of that stuff coming from that area of the world, but I never heard this. But this was like, this, dude, this was like BGK hardcore. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's super, super good stuff. But um, it was a really, really nice gift getting this so if you're kind of in that vein if you like that vein of like hardcore punk um these guys are really really good and this came out 19 1988 no and i think they've been around since 1984 and this was again this was um they released this it was self-released um but if you can find this and i believe you could probably find it on discogs um not too pricey but Really, really good Dutch punk. Nice. Cool. I have to see that. That's very cool. Never heard that. Yeah, it seemed kind of one of those obscure finds, you know. But um, I had it. It's it's just it was like the Griffin thing, you know. It's been like yeah. in my collection right in front of me, and it's like, oh yeah, like oh, I this, on the front table, so. this is a kind of common theme on this show, but it's kind of records that have got forgotten. Nobody cares about. You can still find them cheap, but they're great records. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're wonderful. Did perfectly mm -hmm. in your collection, yeah. yeah. So Clifford in the comments says, "I need to take notes." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so do I. I saw, no, 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 no. You got to watch the episode back, and then, and then. There you go. <laughs> okay, Bill, what's your what's your next choice? Bill? Okay, um, another record that's getting quite a bit of hype Ooh. now, um, okay. and that is Rat Cage. <laughs> Oh, cool. In the shadow oh, of the bomb. And, oh, I've seen that cover. It's I love the design in the. I'm the sorry, bomb. Bill. Which rat cage is that? Is that that's not the recent rat cage, is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yep. fuck, man. Yes. Just came out a couple weeks ago, I think. Yep. And um, my one complaint about this record is that I want it to be longer. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Nice. How, how long are the songs? Like a minute, minute and a half kind of thing? Um, I mean, it's 45 speed. You got they two last... minutes on one side. What was their last record, man? That was um two and a half on the other. Um 
It's the split with nervous. nervous SS. Yes. Yes. Yep, yep. Yes, dude. Okay. Yeah. That band shreds, man. Um, yeah. That that band, Rat Cage, they made my last year's list on that split, man. They were mm -hmm, like yeah. my end of year list. My, my yeah, top, yeah. Top is, it, stuff. is this really one guy doing all this? I think it's one guy, right? I when know. they play, they play live though. So they are. Well, yeah. They played the UK, didn't they? Yeah, they I mean, like, they, I know they played in the U.S. I think too. I don't know. God, uh, fuck, I hope not, man. I would like to see that. Yeah, it's it's really good. Uh, La Vida S M Moose. Um, yeah, Paco. Very cool, man. Yeah, you got awesome. good taste, Bill. <laughs> and uh, yeah. you and your good taste. <laughs> I want. I That's want to I see this band. If they play, I want to go see them. Yeah, yeah. man. I'll be in it's England. That fucking raw cutting chainsaw D beat stuff, man. It's fucking yeah. awesome. Cool. Yeah. It's like I if they're gonna do a split, I want a split of Rat Cage and Vasca. Oh, oh. Man, nice. Man. Man. Great. I haven't thought about Vasca in a while. We we opened from there one time. I think it's Vasca's playing here uh next a week from today. Oh, or a really? week from tomorrow, hmm. something like that. That'll be the next time I get COVID. Yeah, we inform you. Yeah, inform the audience. Yeah, on your calendar, on number three. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay, Rob. What you got next for us? All right. So this, so this is one of those records where in bands where I think a lot of people forgot them. Which is great because the records are cheap and they're fucking amazing. And this one I had never seen in the wild. Um, kind of have a thing for 415 records. Uh, that label is really cool. They have some really like unsung bands on it, like uh, Red Rockers, um, The Offs, um, you know, a couple other things. But one of the interesting things I found lately, I was at a record store in Greensburg and they're usually a little too expensive for my taste for used stuff. But I, you know, found a, a few and this popped up. I was like, oh, fuck yes. So this is one of my favorite, like, bands that never gets mentioned. I love them. Uh, this record's superb. The record is called It's a Condition. The band is... I can't do this. This is so weird. Okay, hold on. Hey, Romeo, turn, turn your lights off. <laughs> I can't because I'll be in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't so, yeah, tell if you've never heard R Romeo Void, they're um, Romeo Void. Okay. Yes. So this is Romeo Void's first album called It's a Condition. Um, it has hmm, sort of like New York, downtown New York 81 vibe. Like, I wouldn't say fooled hmm. no wave, but like that sultry, sax driven, kind of off kilter mixed with like the motels. Don't tell and fear. mixed with and very like very like just very bleak flat simple and her voice the woman's name was deborah isle and oh hmm. god her voice is incredible it's like sultry and sexy and also scary and kind of cold <laughs> it's like oh, slightly like kind of haunting or something yeah. um no more like um pretty like her voice like are, she it's almost spoken okay mm. and it's kind of huh. like like kind of looking at you like this you know what i mean kind of like a side yeah. eye and like like you know coming it's like the spider to the fly that's like right her femme, femme fatale like yes yeah a cold femme fatale not like nico cold mm. yeah more sultry and sexy it's awesome right um huh that's kind of interesting man yeah, it's really good stuff. It's like like just blippy, good guitar lines, very post punk guitar lines, like a of the edge, like the first couple U two album sound. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and but then uh, you know California kind of thing that was going on out there in the you know eighty two, eighty one around that period of time. But yeah, another ten buck record, eight buck record. Yeah. You can't beat shit like that. I think that's one of the things I've always noticed the older I got. It's like, just keep buying the cheap shit that's really weird and really cool because no one's going to want it. Yeah. Until they see this show. Until yeah. now. Yeah. Fuck, I ruined it. 
No, man. Have one spot. You're shining a light on this stuff, man. <laughs> yeah. That's the whole point. It's fucking awesome. Oh, yeah. That's true. <laughs> you know? This is cool. I've got some but, avant-garde records to look into. Yeah. I, I love, you know, being exposed to stuff, it's like, it, you know, it proves that, like, no matter how old you get and you're into music and art like this, you're never, you're always going to be surprised. Right? Yeah, man. Yeah. You're always going to find something that's like, fuck, I'm 54. I didn't know this band, you know, existed. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's there's so much out there, you know, and it, it, even if you, oh, I think I don't like this genre, then you hear this band, it's like, oh, Jesus, that's, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, it's like I didn't realize what this was, but yeah, it's all about like you know finding that score. Yeah, nice. Kind of cool, but yeah, thanks. All right, my next choice okay. you could say is the least punk of all the choices today, but in a way, way, it's the most punk. Ooh, Bear okay. with me. So I'm I don't know if anyone watched mysterious. last week. People, people uh, watched last week's episode. My, my <laughs> mate Pete Larson was on, and um, Pete lived in Kenya. <clears throat> and he has a record label called Dagoretti Records, and he releases a lot of Kenyan music. And he's back oh, nice. in the States now. Yes. Uh, he lives in Ann Arbor now. But uh, hmm. last week he showed a different record. But when he showed that, I was like, oh, God, I've got played this other record that he put out because it's it's so good. I'm talking about this record. This is okay. Odua Nyagueno is the name of this guy. And last week, Pete showed this instrument on the show. This is a Niatiti. A tra traditional like hand Can you bring that a little, just a little closer yeah this was so yeah, super kind of interesting what well last talking. week yeah. pete showed he's pete makes them makes them he can make them and he <laughs> plays them. and this this guy was his teacher in kenya so this guy oh, taught wow. pete how to play this instrument in kenya yeah it's like a dying instrument like not many people play it anymore oh, yeah. it looks sort yeah. of like like a uh, harp it's kind of, it's like a liar if you kind of say it in english yeah. Pete always puts liar but it's like it's all handmade mm -hmm. um very interesting but the point of this really is that and this is this is the guy so oh, nice. i mean it's basically a dying art form or a dying form of music because no one's learning to play this instrument anymore oh, man. um so That's pete strange. what he did he recorded this guy like out in kenya on a cell phone mm -hmm. and it's just him pretty much and, and this instrument and like, I like, like I listen to a lot of African music from like, like um, Nigeria and stuff, which is really like high energy, funky James Brown kind of yeah. stuff. So when I first heard this, it was kind of, oh, this isn't very exciting, but like it is because this instrument is very hypnotic. Oh, here we yeah. go. And it kind of goes in a loop. And before you know it, you're kind of in almost like a trance. It's almost oh, got like a like a built-in delay or something it, like each note might, overlaps. Yeah, it's just like very like psychedelic and the, the, like, it. the, it's absolutely incredible. And so mm, what he's been doing is he's <laughs> been like preserving just like so, the old blues recordings. Like, and so Mike, Mike, if mm. you don't mind me asking, Go ahead. You, you said that he went over there and he recorded it on his cell phone. Is that the well, actual production? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, Pete, wow. lived in, Pete lived in Kenya for a, a long time. He was working out there. So he got to know all these guys. That's interesting, man. But the record that he showed last week, he actually did some stuff with it in the studio and sent it back. And he thought the guy would hate it, but he loved it. But this is just okay. as you so he just kind of like mastered it out in Kenya, <clears throat> just on a cell phone. It's just like listening to like an old blues recording from the twenties or thirties. Yeah, yeah, like Scrappy. a Lomax recording. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something like that. That's what he, Pete yeah. was was doing. Yeah, but this is very That's psychedelic. Cool. So, so yeah, cool. it's Odua Nyagueno, Where I Go, I Am There. It's on Dagoretti Records. Okay. There you go. Um, nice. Yeah, this is from, when was it? This came out, like, two, oh, last year, I think, Pete put that out. But, uh, yeah. It's really, really important, great work that Pete's doing. So, there you go. Nice, man. <clears throat> yeah, that's cool. There you go. <clears throat> Excuse yeah, me. You. Andy. Already? <laughs> Already, yeah. already. Yeah. The clockwise system. That's how it goes. <laughs> All right. So I discovered this band some years ago. They were so awesome that I did a review on them and I forced the review on this kind of online blog music publication thing. And I was like, this band is so good. I have to tell the world. Wow. Well. The cover is nothing special, but that's okay because the music speaks volumes. But this band is from New Zealand, 
and they're mm. very political. They're very anarcho punk um, with a smattering of kind of rudimentary penai injected into mm. it. So you have this kind of dancing bass all over the place, and it's mm-hmm. fucking super good. Oh, wow. Oh, this yeah. band is Unsanitary I'm Napkin. I've heard the name. Dude, <gasps> put on your fucking seatbelt, right? <laughs> this is called All Billionaires Are Bastards, which they are. Yeah. And this band covers a lot of territory in the realms of sociopolitical um, issues, topics, you know. Um, I really appreciate them because um, if you've ever seen their videos, they're very energetic. They have really good shows, but the message itself, it's not, there's nothing generic about it at all, at all, man. This is why this stands out to me. Musically, it's super fucking strong. And it's, again, it's kind of peni. It's not peni influenced, but it like they injected kind of some Blinko kind of style in there. Um, but these, uh, and these, I'm trying to think, there's three labels. I've, Three or two. There's uh, it's off Limbless Records, and then um, hmm, I, I can't even read that. Uh, Always never fun. Um, and this was released a couple of years ago. I believe this was 2020. Nice. Um, and they even do a crass cover. You know, they, they do do they owe us a living, but um, very 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 good band. Excellent production, but not sterile. Um, and just uh, I don't know. To me, this is anarcho punk and how it should be. And Bill, from your reaction, it sounds like you've heard from heard of them. Yeah, yeah. That yep. turfy thing they did was fucking stellar, man. I've seen it on a lot of people's end of year lists over the past week or so. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, and I haven't Excellent. heard, but I got to give props, like without even hearing it, to a band that uses uh, imagery from um, the movie Society on the cover. Right. Did you ever see that film? Oh, 80s the film? Yeah, film? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's what the cover of the, the like, face, the yeah. page off. Yeah, that's cool as fuck. I was like, whoa, that's really neat. Okay. I like okay. Yeah, I like, the, I like the idea of, you know, combining that with a classic anarcho, you know, like, crass military. Yeah, and, and again, yeah. it's like there's nothing too special <laughs> about it. It's like we've, we've kind of seen that wraparound text, wraparound font, mm-hmm. you know, uh, stencil style a zillion times. Right. But the thing about it is that it's 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 a signature look. Mm-hmm. It's it's kind of part of the punk tribe, right? Yep, it is. Yeah, no. So I if, if you know it, it, it kind of calls to you, and you check it out. But man, this I can't I can't speak highly enough about it, man. It's fucking nice. awesome. Nice. And sanitary napkin, check them out. It's a great name. Yeah, it's going on the list. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's nice and on the list. I love it. I should do is Jim Martin always like actually brings a, 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 a pencil and notepad with him when he yeah. comes on. Writes it down. Yes. That's a good idea. Yeah. I, didn't bring it. I just watch it back and then yes. yeah, yeah, get, yeah. get that extra view. Avant guard. Yeah. 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 Bumping the stats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bill, what's your next choice, man? All Come right. on, Bill, give it to us, man. <laughs> My yeah. next one is a perfect record. Ooh, I'm it's right. perfect. Let's go. Oh, yes. Well, you just won the show. Yeah. It's perfect. This is a perfect record. It's excellent, uh, man. I mean, I've had this since it came out, but I started listening. I, I found this CD that Distortion sent me many years ago mm-hmm. this week, and I started listening to it, and I just couldn't stop listening to it. Yeah. And it, such a great record. Those two Such albums a great with record. Uh, it's perfect. Are like... Yeah. Not... Yeah. Dude, okay. So, yes, that fucking record shreds. I'm kind of curious on your opinion about Wolf Brigade. They have a lot of records. Some of them are... Uh, they have a lot of them. Some of them are good and some of them are not <laughs> so good. Their, their, latter, their latter stuff, especially the second to the last one, the run with the hunted. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, the last, really the last two... Record are really good really good and uh it was kind of shockingly good i mean they, they do have a lot of records but like those last two especially the second to the last one literally kicked yeah. me in the, in the nuts it was insane i mean it sounds like they're going trying to get back to this record right that's why uh, i kind of wanted to ask okay. you like 
that compared to you I know, mean, recent. It was a little bit of a tough transition for me from Wolf packing to Wolf Brigade. Yeah. Uh, I kind of warmed up you. to some of the records for sure. Yeah. And I just love Johnson's voice so much. You know, it's, yeah. He's just got that yeah. grit and anger and bile to it that you can't quite get. pissed off, man. Yeah. Anger. Dude, there's something in the water up there, dude. I don't know what it is, man. It's it's like a formula. It's, it's like a Swedish formula. I don't. I. What's going on? What's going hey, did on? Did I see them? Did they play Pittsburgh, Bill? Um, Wolf Brigade. Did. Wolf Brigade probably did, right? Okay, yeah. all right. I, Wolf Pack, I think, know. did a West Coast tour, didn't they? Yeah. I do not know. I know mm-hmm. when I met Johnson. In Sweden, he was pissed off then. <laughs> How was he doing? He's like he's like the Sakavi of Sweden. <laughs> yeah. Was he a Mormon maniacs? Yes. He, he did that thing, which is like it's him with the, the backing band is Marduk, the black metal band, which is also a little oh. bit controversial because they very controversial. But so, yes, and I didn't know that when I first heard Mormon maniacs, and that fucking it leveled me, man. Yeah, incredible record. Yeah, that's a nice, that's a real like crowd pleaser. That one for sure. <laughs> Everybody loves that record. That's a killer. Yeah. Okay. Before I move on, yeah. I've got to mention this is funny. Uh, Clifford said about the unsanit- unsanitary napkins. He said they have an album yeah. cover with Trump getting shot with a rainbow laser mm-hmm. from a vagina. <laughs> that's, that's, so, <laughs> that's amazing. That okay? Is that the same band? Or they what? okay? So may, maybe I don't know. They okay. So unsanitary napkin. I'm don't mean to backtrack here. No, 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 no it's okay. Unsanitary it napkin have it have has like a subsidiary or a side project band called Displeasure. Maybe that's what it is. But it's it's I believe it's the exact same members. But it's like electro synth punk. Well, yeah, just well, as I, anarcho, just as political, but it's like. Crazy noise. He, he might. He's not talking about Vasca, right? That's right. I think it's maybe displeasure. I don't okay, know. we'll we'll find out in a minute. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then Jason. I could uh, be Jason, wrong Jason says, if you ever come come ever come along an LP of Frankie Williams and the Slices, it's like hmm. Puerto Rican um, Italian four piece garage based out of Columbia, Ohio. Really? No, that's my uh, roommate upstairs doing that. Um, so for, I'll explain. So. Uh, Frankie Williams actually is a 70s professional wrestler who has the distinction of never winning a bout. <laughs> and, but, never, and never winning? Never. He never won. Never winning a what, though? So he about, didn't have a bank like called the Slices? Oh, about. Yeah. yeah, so, like, I don't know who the fuck the Slices are. I don't know where he's getting <laughs> this from. But, no, like, he's probably really high right now. So I'm like, okay, yeah. I've been, it's all good. I'm I've been, I've been looking, looking at it out of the corner of my eyes. Like, what the hell is, like, Puerto Rican so, Italian four-piece garage out of Columbus, Ohio? <laughs> don't Somebody just posted. Track. Somebody just posted about Wolfpack. Sorry to, sorry to backtrack again. No, no, no. no. Uh, Wolfpack, they played in 2000s, and I believe Pontius Pilot toured with Wolfpack before I joined Pontius Pilot. So I think there were a three piece. So I think that's when Wolfpack did the West Coast. Congratulations to Jason for one of the best comments. Yeah, <laughs> I will let him know. <laughs> it was awesome. I was like, I started laughing because I couldn't stop. I was just like, oh God. That's <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, Rob. Next up, Frank Williams, right. maybe. So, the, I wish it was the Frank Williams. <laughs> like, I would, that's like a ten thousand dollar record. Right? <laughs> um, I wish, but anywho, uh, we'll go back to that record store in in Kaiser. I was looking through stuff, and the day I was there, it was just ridiculous. It was like everything I've ever. Th- I'm like, oh, I'm like psych, 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 like bonehead, heavy acid rock, you know that kind of shit, right? So here's another one I never ever thought I would find ever I had the single a promo single and it kicked ass and I'm like I'll never find it. I didn't even know they had a record but if you ever see this try to get it cheap like I did thank God um the name of the band it's hard to see this uh God here <laughs> take it out of its house there you go. Tin, Tin house. house yeah this is heavy as fuck do tell Oh, okay. So it's like early 70s. Um, 
produced by Rick Derringer, so that should give you that. Sleazy, heavy, hairy, um, you know, pounding rock, bonehead rock, acid rock, heavy, you know, heavy rock. Uh, acid rock. I haven't heard that in ages. <laughs> I love that term. I've been using it since I was a kid. I just, I saw it on a couple of Acid rock, fuck yeah. Yeah. But yeah, this record is superb. Um, it's just like pounding and rock and roll. The opening track is basically a guy trying to, he's basically saying, give me your body. That's the name of the, the song. And there's like fuck noises at one point in the song, you know, people like moaning right. and moaning. It's like, I, I just picture filthy hippies and it's just like, oh God. So, but musically, fuck yes. On point, heavy. I would definitely check it out. Okay. Jesus, that's another one. The first for me, never heard of it before. People um, are saying it's a great, great record. They want that record. There you yeah, go. It's, a, it's really good. It, it reminds me of what I think that band Pooba sounds like. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Pooba. Yeah. I know yeah. I swear I talked to one guy one time from Pooba. I can never find the records cheap ever. That's some yeah. kind of reissue from a few years ago, but yeah, it, yeah. the guys Jim, the one Jim from Pooba still plays. So wow. mm-hmm. yeah. Yep. Wow. He pops and up on You could go Facebook. see him, Rob. It's in Ohio. Yeah. He, he plays, he has a Facebook page where, or not Facebook page, he goes on like record sites or like punk sites or anything like that. And he'll be like, do I have an original first poobah, like, you know, still sealed of $250. Yeah. It's just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and do that. I said, I, I, I said, I need that Berlin single again. If uh, but I'm not paying a hundred dollars for it. Yeah. No, but yeah, if if you're like into like that kind of style of stuff, I mean, it's it's a must here. Seriously, it's a great, yeah. it's a really great record. Nice, but yeah. All right, last go around. My last yep. choice. I'm going back to Japan, man. But like 1972. I'm oh. going back to 1972. Okay, Jeez, so let's imagine like a samurai <clears throat> movie with a soundtrack which is really super distorted psychedelic surf guitar. Oh, sounds all perfect. Well, yeah, you've come. Well, you've come to the right place because uh, here, <laughs> here, here it is. Here it is. Oh, what is it? Takeshi Terauchi and the Blue Jeans. Nice. This album is called Rashomon, which, if you remember the um, Akira Kurosawa film called mm-hmm. Rashomon from the fifties, he does the mm-hmm. soundtrack to that in his crazy oh. way. Oh, cool. I'd love to hear that. Yeah. So Rashomon is kind of, there's actually a term now called the Rashomon way of storytelling. It means like oh, really? a, a listening to a story from four different people's Multiple perspectives. Directors. But right. in Japanese, it means disputes. But anyway, this is Takeshi Terauchi. He had a couple of bands in the 60s and 70s called, they had one band called the Blue Jeans, another band called the Bunnies. Now, this is oh, a guy, right. it's very typical of Japan. He was signed to a major label. He was kind of controlled a little bit. So he did some schmaltzy records that kind of sound like Mm -hmm. the ventures, but he did some really ripping heavy records too. And this is like Mm. probably the best of the bunch. It's like psychedelic. It's got some really heavy Hammond organ, like just ripping like surf guitar. And then the down parts sound a little bit like a Yakuza movie, like soundtrack. Mm. It's incredible. So this came out 72? 72. Mm -hmm. And this one came out in germany too for some reason on the telefunken label oh, okay so uh, yeah this is one of the his most like expensive records on discourse i don't know why but um he has a ton of records like hundreds mm. he was knocking them out like two albums a month almost wow. back in the 70s Jesus. i mean That's he was insane. a workaholic workaholic and alcoholic a really mean boss he used to like beat up his bandmates he's a real kind of yakuza mm. kind of type of a guy that's how it should be done but Pardon his me, good records his good records out. are <laughs> what it's driving me fucking crazy. Just hold on for one. Oh, I thought he was going to go beat up his bandmates. <laughs> yes, I should do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back. I got to kick my bass. That, that ass. reminds me that I, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> no, sorry about that. I was like, it was so distracting. Right, kick the drummer. Yeah. Anything. So yeah. Mm. Uh, okay. Remember you showed that thing with a little mm. line of notes about the members of the band. This has some like. Oh, I don't know why they have this hilarious like liner notes in English <laughs> and about like each member of the band, and it's oh, just cool. uh, I'll just read it out. It's so funny. It's like, um, 
Hajime Shinjo, the bass, his special, his special skill, he can take a bath within three minutes. <laughs> Like, I, my yeah, record is that's 12 crazy. that's amazing yeah i mean yeah but, i don't but, but, close to <laughs> but then you've got kaoru ishi on the rhythm guitar his special skill is he can sleep in any position position at any time weird liner notes in english that is uh. really odd yeah i like that it doesn't go with the record the record is really like psychedelic and dark and samurai yeah movie. nice with surf guitar, but this guy is awesome. But it's a minefield. His discography is a minefield. Uh, okay. There's Schmaltz, and then there's this really out there psychedelic stuff. So you've got to be careful. Oh, wait, okay. wait, wait, wait. I have to show this because if you can't find these records, there's this. This is a compilation that was kind of released oh, in yeah. the West. I did see that like, cover at the uh at the attic. Yeah, I didn't know what that was. I know what this is a, like a greatest hits for like the Western market. It's okay. Right. You want to get like the Japanese ones if you can, but if you can't find that, then, then that'll yeah. do. I'll look on Snow Record site, they might have it. Hey, hey, that's a good idea. Yeah, yep. so that's my you last pick for the day some psychedelic surf samurai music from Japan. I'm like the shit. Andy, this is my last, last one. Pick. Your last pick of the day. I have so many records. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to come back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh I'll, oh. I'll come back with some avant-garde you never heard of. <laughs> you will, you will. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's here's a cool thing. France has been putting out some amazing punk rock lately. Hmm. There's been some sort of weird resurgence of punk in in France lately that has been um stellar, stellar work. I mean Nice. Obviously, you have Lefraction, you have like Bombardment, whatever. Mm. This band I discovered because I saw them live. Okay. I didn't know who they were when I saw them. I, it fucking floored me. Uh, Syndrome 81. Oh. And they have this brand new LP out. Oh my God. It is so good. Um, I'm assuming it's titled. Oh, dun, 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 dun. is that the version with like the extra LP in there? Yes, with the oh, extra. There you go. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Oh, that one. Yeah. I'm assuming that would be like imaginary prisons, mm. prisons imagined, something I like that. So. Yeah. That's a great cover, dude. Okay, so if you're kind of into mid-tempo punk rock that has they this is this this is where I'm kind of a little confused about because they. You know, you go to Discogs or something like that. They call it Oi. I don't fucking see, hear any Oi. I don't see any of that Oi in it. It's but got it, more maybe, post. Maybe it has. Oh. Yeah. Well, What's that? It, it's more post post like oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's almost like kind of like later Blitz style. That's kind exactly. Of style. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, know, like <laughs> Second Empire Justice era. Yeah, that kind yeah. of dude. This album and what they did before they have a seven inch called. Um, <clears throat> Uh, ur I'm assuming it's like desert urban or urban desert or something like that. Um, and I can't pronounce it because it's in French, but um, that seven inch introduced me to this, which just came out, I think l this year. Yeah. It just came out. This year. Yeah. Yep. 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 <clears throat> which is going to make my list, but my two. syndrome 81 is probably one of the best punk bands. I think I've heard in a long, long, long time. I was in Reykjavik, Iceland. I was catching a flight to go play Puntala Punk Fest in Finland. I came across some dudes that were, you know, dressed in black, whatever. And then it turned out, you know, we kind of started talking to them. And it turned out, yeah, we're, we're playing the fest. And they're like, yeah, we're Syndrome 81. I was like, okay, that's cool. Like, nice to meet you. And then we were at the fest. And they went on stage. And I was floored. Fucking floored. So I bought what they had available, which was that 7-inch and like a shirt or something like that. And then I started contacting them after that. And this, like, this is easily by far some of the best punk I've ever heard. Oh, cool. At That's least to date, you know, just because there's been a lot of like carbon copies of this and clones of that, you know, and these guys stand out, man. And they've got a message as well. Um, but this is easily probably some of the best stuff I've heard, at least in the last decade. Very nice. Syndrome 81. Yeah. Uh, check them out. Highly, well, like highly, said, highly. The recommended. first album is a little bit more 
Oi, the first album is a little bit. That's not that white covered um, urban desert thing that I No, they had one before that. Yeah. I can't remember. But, but yeah, they have I, a handful of records out, but what they're that doing is. Record wins the prize for the one that's been shown the most <laughs> on this program so far. I think three yeah. different people have shown it which is great you know, it obviously means it's a great record so. yeah no. he did a um he did a he's doing or doing or did or i i haven't had a chance to check it out but he's the i think it's a singer doing a solo project Someone jackie was... mm. thing and this was this was self-released but yes it's the one with the um has the other cover as well nice like that. nice yeah, undoubtedly a great okay. band and a great record, for sure. Yeah, any really, really, really good stuff. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Bill. <Right. laughs> Bill, what's your next choice? Joe last is choice. <laughs> My last one for the evening. The last one got? for the evening, make it count. Band I've been listening to for a long time, since the 80s. Sedition. Sedition. Sedition discography. Um, okay. Uh, yes. I love Sedition. This is this is great. Dude, that's so weird. Uh, I was just thinking about those guys today, man. That's really weird. It's um let's see who put this out. That's a discography? Yep. That was put out by um uh, circa oh. 89 to 92. Yeah, who was that, man? I'm drawing a blank. Screaming babies. Screaming babies. MCR. And no. North London Bomb Factory. Yeah, because I think I think MCR had them come play in Japan. Yeah, they yeah. yes. A few they years ago, all. something like that. Yeah. I don't know. Angus, tell us what happened. Yes. Sedition. Perfect, perfect. My I mean, I wish they had the uh, burlap cover like that. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yeah. Man, I, used, I I had like 30 copies of that when it came out because I got them from yep. SNES and they, they went pretty quick. That one, that album and the Bastard LP, the 12 inch from Japan, like those two would like go in like head to head of like the people love those two. Nice. Um, but you that, you can't get that these days. That's so hard to find with the original the Hessian sack, whatever you want to call it. Hmm. You know, the first LP, right? With the has the like the, the cloth, yep. the sack, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, great, good choice, Bill. Yeah, yeah. That's a, yeah. That's yeah. Like yeah. a great. I got records more often. Yeah, <laughs> that's definitely a great band from that era of the UK. For, I mean, one yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah. There was something about that era, man. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> Ireland, Scotland, UK, like that whole era, like. The whole kind of like hardcore crust kind of scene, man. I don't know. There was a spirit behind it. It was fucking killer. Yep. All right. I'm gonna step <laughs> off my soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rob. What's your last choice, man? What's your last choice? All right, I'm bringing it home. All right, bringing it home. Bringing it home. All right. So uh, I just recently found this for very cheap. Uh, another great cheapie. Okay. I, you know, I, I saw it. And I'm like, yes, I need this. And the reason being is because growing up in the seventies, the kids who were like five to like six years older than me. Like the older kids, their older brothers and sisters who were like five or six years older than them who were stoners heads. We, they're, you're either a head or a jock. So I grew up in head territory. So the like the oldest heads, like the eldest heads, listen to this band. You know, there was the bands we were listening to. I was growing up and hearing like Black Sabbath and Deep Purple and Led Zeppelin, of course, you know, hearing that. But this is what the really old people that smell, like the dudes that had really long hair and and um, you know, ponytails, scarlets basically, and like They're really smell tight. Yeah, really tight and like shitty weed. They smell like dirt weed and seeds. They listen to this record. And now I know why everyone. Fucking Come on, man. It. What is it? What is it? What is it? Hey, yeah. You're in the best rock records ever. Robin Trower. Oh. <laughs> this record is fucking incredible. It's like I don't know, man. I think it's the younger that one. I even What's got it? goosebumps when you just showed the album cover. Seriously, I love, I love What's it up? so much. Uh, I, isn't I it amazing? Goosebumps just was looking at the album cover. I love it. Annihilation Time did a couple songs off of that. 
Really? Yep. Oh, fuck. That would be insane. Oh, God. Yeah, that would yeah. be. I, oh. For it's anyone who missed that, that was Robin Trout. And the yeah, yeah, Robin Trout. Sorry, <laughs> size. sorry about that. Everyone was like, ah. You know, but that record. This is like it, uh, six bucks first press US. I'm like, okay. It's perfect condition, never played. It's one of those records someone had on their shelf. Like, you know, they wanted to be cool or, you know. That, smoking weed in a van or whatever, that, and they're like, "Right, sorry, you know. I, like that transition from Bridge of Size into what's it called in this place?" Uh, Bridge of Size, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like well, one of it, the greatest moments in yeah. the history of music. It's, it's absolutely, so absolutely good. incredible. It sounds the guitar, the whole tone and feel of this record. There's like this bleakness, like this cold, yeah. icy night, like midnight vibe to it. Yeah. And he's just <laughs> fucking killing it on it's guitars. Not like just your standard blues rock. There's something. No, not even close. It's no. it's not on that level. It's more Hendrixian. I mean, it's, it's well, he was like... a bit of a Hendrix clone, but he definitely by that time yeah. he got his own thing going. Yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely touches of that, but he definitely has his own style. And who would have thought, like the guy from Procol Harum, it's like, you know, just killing it. That's but like yeah, one that's of my. An... I have all these. I have all these records. That's one of my favorite records in my collection. No kidding, I I love it. I, I love it. It's so good, and I can't yeah. stop listening to it. I've listened no, to it like one 10 of those, times yeah. Yeah. in a row. It's like I can't like that. And the two I always do that with is this and um, uh, on time by Grand Funk. Oh. Wait, stop, hold that thought. Brian from Drop Dead said he, when you're leading up to that, he was saying, I hope it was going to be Grand Funk. So, Next time, I swear, <laughs> right? just forget, I'll, I'll pull out the Grand Funk. But um, yeah, another band that, like, for a while, the, you know, the kids were trying to get into, you know, that heavy rock and stuff. Uh, there was a revival, and but no one really cared. And now you can get those records again for six, five, six bucks. And yeah. it's like, they're killer. They're like, you know, yeah, I mean, like, all his 70s records are good, but that one is definitely special yeah yeah i agree there's something just magical about bridge of size it's so good yep Absolutely. but thank uh, you so much that is a perfect way to end today's show mm -hmm. it's like man every week it's just so much fun oh this is a blast yeah thanks everyone for coming around thanks everyone for watching yeah. go and check out any of these bands you haven't checked out yet there's a what 20 maybe 20 records shown today or actually 24 because i cheated I should. I should. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. So until next week, thanks for watching. Have a good weekend. Stay yep. healthy. And stay. Thank clean. you. Yeah.